Hi guys, welcome. Today we are going to make homemade raspberry jam. It is fresh, it's delicious, and it's very, very easy. And it is so good. I actually have a friend whose husband savors a spoonful of it every night after dinner. So dog, this video is for you, and I have more jam coming your way. I'd like to welcome you to my backyard Kentucky homestead. My name is Kim, and let's get started. So we are going to go ahead and get our jars heated up so they are ready to go as soon as our raspberries are. I am using the Presto Digital Pressure Canner. You can use just a regular pot. This is going to be water bath canning. So as long as you can get one to two inches of water over at the top of the jar, you're good to go. So the simple, no pressure canning, super easy, no scary bits and pieces. So for this machine, we're going to go to water bath canning and we're going to go for 10 minutes. Go ahead and click that. Tells me to insert jars. I'm going to go ahead and put the jars in there. I think we can get about 10 of these half pint jars in. Yep, that should work. So you'll notice in here there's a metal trivet that goes underneath the jars. And whenever you're canning of any sort, be it pressure canning or water bath canning, you want to make sure your jars are not touching the bottom of the pan. You need to have something in there. Most pressure canners, including this digital one, come with a metal insert, but you could just easily use a uh, kitchen towel as long as the, the glass jars are not touching the pan directly. This just could cause them to crack. We're going to go with nine, just to be safe. One, two, three, four. So we're going to go ahead with nine of those. I'm going to go ahead and put hot water in here part way up. I'm going to put a little bit of water in each of the jars as well as around it, maybe about three inches or so. Uh, once we fill the jars in, we will fill it completely. So one of the things I like about the digital pressure canner, whether you're doing water bath canning as we are here or pressure canning, it controls almost everything on its own. There are just a couple of stages that you have to watch and push the button. But it makes it really simple. You don't have to time it. You don't have to watch it. It tells you what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and close it up. I'm going to go also go ahead and push the button so it will start warming those jars up. Okay, so while that is heating, we're gonna go ahead and get our raspberries washed up, then we're gonna crush them and get them cooking. Now I am gonna add just a little bit of vinegar to this, just to add a little bit more of a safety mechanism for any kind of bacteria, mold, or germs that might be in there. Make sure my water is cold. And then we're gonna finish filling that up. And let them soak for a few minutes. Give them a good turn. And then we'll come back in just a minute, drain them, and then we'll start getting them crushed up and into the pot. You want to make sure you take out any leaves. I did find a few leaves uh, in these packages. Ah. My raspberries are brand new outside, so I don't have enough of my own yet, but maybe next year I will. So we're gonna leave this for a few minutes and then we'll be back. Just like magic, we are back. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain these and then I'm gonna rinse them off and then we will start mashing them up. And it would be easier to do it this way. And I just rinse them off a little bit. Okay. Let those drain for a minute. What I'm going to be using is the Sure Gel Low Sugar Pectin. And for this, uh, you'll see that it has instructions in there. And we're going to be doing the blackberry, boysenberry, raspberry. Uh, we need about 10 cups of berries, which is what we have, just about. 
Once we crush them up, we'll have about five cups of berries and then we will need four cups of sugar. Now from that sugar, I took out a quarter cup from the four cups. So the put four cups in this bowl and then I took a quarter of a cup out and put it in this bowl. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix the pectin into that. I'll just get this stirred up, break up any little clumps. We'll set that aside and then we will start on our berries. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and just take some of them, put them in my bowl. And I'm going to use a potato masher to start squishing them. If you've had a tough day at work, this is a good plan. Now there's this, uh, this next step is optional. I've seen recipes where you take about half of the raspberries and run them through the sieve, where you take all of them. Uh, according to the directions for sure gel, this is optional. But what I'm gonna do to reduce the amount of seed within the jam itself, I'm gonna try to run this through the sieve. Try to get the seeds out. This one may be too small. That's better. I'm just going to stir it all around. So you can run these through this, uh, the sieve like that. It is actually optional. But what I'm going to do for the one half portion of this that I'm going to uh, try to DC. I'm going to go ahead and run it through this contraption. It is a stand mixer attachment kitchen tree. Uh, I have a Cuisinart, but this will fit any stand mixer. They're all very, I think they're all uh, uniform in how they connect, but you can do different ways. Uh, vegetable and fruit strainer. I use it a lot for my tomato sauces. So let's go ahead and get some berries in here and see how this does. And the juice is going to come down the bottom there. So I'm going to do one more spoon. One more. And then we'll just crush the last of Crush the rest of those. Now this has a lot of, what I'm putting back in there has a lot of uh, pulp still in there. So I'm gonna run it through again. And what we should start seeing coming out here is drier. All right, I think we're going to call that. Let's take this off. And we still have a lot of really good jam there. So we're going to go ahead and scrape that off. So here's what we got from the hat. Looks really, really good. For the remainder of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, mash it. And then we'll get it into the pot. But we'll leave the seeds in this. And you can leave the seeds in all of it. You don't have to de-seed it.
So according to the directions, we need five cups of crushed berries. So I'm going to start with this. this up to four cups with the pulp that we just squashed. Right. So that is four cups. So we need one more is going to be hard to see. All right, so that was just about right. We have just a little bit left over. So that's what we have left over, and we'll just have that for dessert tonight. So we're going to go ahead and mix our quarter cup of sugar and our package of pectin in. Just going to sprinkle it all around. And then we will stir it in. And we're going to go ahead and turn our heat on high. And then we're also going to add a half a teaspoon of butter to help reduce the amount of foaming that it could do. Just a little, little bit. Not much. Should do it. So we're going to go ahead and stir this constantly on high heat until it comes to a rolling boil. And the roll, rolling boil is when it does not stop boiling when you're stirring it. If you can stir it and it stops boiling, that you're stirring down the boil. So it needs to continue rolling while you are stirring it. Once that happens, then we will add the rest of the sugar and we'll bring it back up to a boil again. So we are just about at a boil, and then we gotta get up to a rolling boil. There we go. So you can hear the popping, there's a little like little bubble pops. Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and put the rest of the sugar in, stirring while we do. So we're going to let this come back up to a rolling boil, and then we're going to boil it for one minute at the rolling boil. I, that's just so cool. It goes from that cloudiness to being translucent. It's like a magic trick. Have your kids watch if you're doing this. If it's really, really hot, it's boiling, so it is extremely hot. So you wouldn't want a small child working on this, but definitely they could stand on a stool near you or a chair and watch over your shoulder from a safe distance. But it's a neat little magic trick. I would also note, if you're doing this, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, I would not use a porcelain pot, a pan that's covered in porcelain. You want to use one that's metal. All right, so we have a rolling boil. We're going to do one minute. So what I'm going to do now is just skim off that foam. So what we are going to do now is grab the ladle. And we need to fill these within a quarter of an inch from the top. So I'm going to use this debubbler uh, headspace gauge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lowest one, which has a quarter inch, under the rim, and then I want the contents to come up to the bottom of the gauge. So I'm just going to go ahead and start ladling some in.
And I got a little bowl of vinegar here. Uh, where this is a sugary substance, we want to make sure that we clean the rim really well. So not just water, but we're going to actually use vinegar. It'll cut right through the sugar. Another thing that you can, what you'll want to do when you're going around the rim, you can feel if there's any imperfections, because that will also cause the seal to fail. So we're gonna put clean lids on these. Now, one thing, as long as you are gonna boil bath or pressure can for at least 10 minutes, you no longer have to sterilize. You need to wash and clean your jars and lids, but you don't know, you, know, you no longer have to sterilize them. So we're gonna put these on fingertip tight, which means you come to a little resistance and you go just a little bit more. You don't wanna wrench it with your wrist, but as tight as you can do it with your fingers. And they are very hot, so be careful. So I'll put these in and get the next set of jars out. All right, so we will not pressure can this one. What we will do is let it cool down completely and then we'll just put it in the fridge and use it. The canning process is for long-term storage. So this one will be perfectly fine. We'll just let it cool, put it in the fridge and enjoy it. And then in the same thing, if for some reason any of these uh, do not seal properly, we'll just use those first as well. Get these last jars in here. Okay, and then what I need to do with boil bath canning is I need to add more water to it so that I have water that's at least one to two inches above the top of the jars. You don't want to do that with pressure canning. You're only going to do that with water bath canning. Pressure canning, they need to be well below the rim. But there is a line. It's usually two or three quarts, I think. There is a line in this pot that tells you how much water to have on it. So we will put the lid on. Close it up and then tell it to go. So it will come up to a full boil, then it will start counting down 10 minutes. It'll boil for 10 minutes, and then it'll go through a cool down cycle, and then it'll let us know that it's done and we can remove the contents. In the meantime, I'm gonna get this mess cleaned up, but we'll be right back. So we had a little problem with the audio, but the canner has finished and we can go ahead and take these out. When you're taking the lid off, you always want to make sure to keep it between you and the steam coming out of the canner just to keep from being, getting burnt. So we're going to use the tongs and we're going to go ahead and pull these out. It can be extremely tempting to want to tip them to get the water off the top, especially with water bath canning. But you don't want to do that because it could cause the contents inside to leak out, which would prevent the seal from adhering to the jar. So you want to make sure not to turn them, uh, keep them as level as possible. You also want to make sure that you're using a towel underneath the jars as you're putting them on the counter, especially if you have a marble quartz or other solid surface countertop that's cold, because the difference between temperature of the cold counter and the jar could cause the glass to crack. So we're going to go ahead and pull these out Leave them here for 12 to 24 hours. Let them cool completely. And then we will check them for the seal. 
Any that have not sealed can be put in their fridge and used. Any that are sealed will go ahead and take the rings off, clean them out, or clean them up, and then we'll put them, label them, and put them on the pantry shelf. So the jars of cooling, we ended up with eight beautiful jars of raspberry jam. So we want to take the rings off. We never want to store the canned goods with rings on them. It can create a false seal to it. It may loosen. It doesn't usually happen, but it can. If the ring is on it, it could cause it to reseal, but it's no longer safe to eat that because the internal area, uh, the ingredients inside have been exposed to air and germs potentially. So it needs to stay sealed, and you want to know that for sure by keeping the ring off. You're going to wash this up, put this on the pantry shelf. If you're interested in more jam, check out these recipes. They're good strawberry as well as peach, and they're really, really delicious. Also easy, so check that out, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.